As you may already know, we can divide the process of taking a photograph in three main phases, and they are pre-production, production, and post-production. Sometimes these phases last a couple of minutes, sometimes it takes much longer. What's important is to be able to recognize them and, rec and recognize in which phase we are in that particular moment in order to act accordingly. The more experience one gets in these processes, the more fluent and conscious the process will be. Today and in the next lesson, we'll talk about pre-production. What is it that makes you to think taking a picture? If you think about fashion photography, it is clear that a lot of work is involved in studying the project in order to get the desired effect. In contemporary photography, things might be slightly different. Sometimes you want to dedicate part of your day to contemporary photography. So you might take 20 minutes of your time and you can take a walk and try to be alert. Other times you want just to stay home and see how the light changes throughout the day. It may also happen that while you are busy doing other things, something happens or you notice a situation that captures your eye. In all these cases, you know you are in the pre-production phase. And so you need to decide whether to pick up your camera or not, whether to take a picture or not. Even more important, in contemporary photography, we need to recognize the moment it's like a flash of perception in which an object, a landscape, an animal, a person becomes something extraordinary to us, which means something different from the usual way that we used to see things. So when this happens, we should try, like we do in meditation, to not let the mental processes take over control of the situation. We will try to remain with that feeling, with that perception, and savor it, enjoy it, whether it would be good or bad. When we recognize what's striking us so deeply, then we can raise up our camera and think about the next stage, the actual production of the picture. Once a great photographer was asked which was the best camera to use? And the answer was the one that you have in your hands when you need it. So there's no real need to have the latest digital camera available on the market uh, with hundreds of megapixels and a super powerful zoom to take good contemplative pictures that might be significant for us. Most of us are probably emotionally attached to some pictures. If you go to your family album, you will surely find more than one. And these pictures are technically, technically poor and made with a dodgy camera. But still, those pictures are so dear to our hearts. So don't buy a new camera to follow these videos. Just use the one that you have. It may be a reflex, it may be a compact one, it may be your phone. It doesn't really matter. We will try to get the best of them together. Furthermore, if you've never used manual settings, you can continue using the automatic mode and the automatic settings. In the next stages, we'll talk about exposure and things like that. But really, the purpose of this course is more about learning to see and training our eyes and developing our creativity. 
then learning how to change the manual settings. There are loads of good books for that, or video tutorials that you can use. A well-known photographer said that he learned how to use his camera in a few hours, but then it took him the rest of his life to learn to see and express himself. Anyway, there are some tips that can be useful to bear in mind while taking a picture. For example, after having switched on the camera and took out the lens cap off, we have to remember that in order to not have a blurry picture, we need to hold our camera firmly. And steadily. So take your camera like this with both hands and your phone also needs to be taken with two hands. Be sure that you are in a well-balanced stance, for example. Uh, be sure that both your feet are touching the ground or put your knee on the ground. Remember not to move while you are taking the picture. If you can, you can also hold your breath and count up to three after you took the picture. In this way, you will be sure that the picture won't be blurred because you were distracted. This might also help you to be focused on what you are doing. If you have a zoom, do not touch it while you are taking the picture unless you want a particular effect. And last thing for today, try to keep the camera horizontally. It is true that in post-production we can realign it, our picture, I mean, but the straighter it is, the less deformation we will have. Especially when taking pictures of buildings. If we do not have our sensor parallel to the ground, buildings will result in highly distortion. I invite you to try and take a wrong picture and a correct one in order to see the difference between the two of them. These tips may sound boring or obvious, but they are a good starting point and will help us to be aware of what we are doing. To be conscious that we are going to take a picture, to stop a portion of time and space in our lives that tells us how we see the world. Last but not least, I thought that we might start taking pictures in a contemplative way with the following assignment. I suggest waiting at least a week before watching the next video in order to have time to practice a little bit. So the assignment is this. I invite you to take a picture of the sky every morning at least for a week. I'll tell you how I do this exercise. I switch off my internet connection of my mobile. I step outside. Uh, if you live in an apartment, I invite you to open your favorite window, for example. And then I close my eyes for some seconds and I breathe some fresh air. I'll try to be aware of my breathing. And then I start to focus on my feet, feeling and severing the connection with the ground. Usually a sense of gratitude emerges. I then know that I am ready to take my daily picture of the sky. It doesn't need to be a masterpiece. Sometimes they are very boring, actually. And if you consider them from an artistic point of view, but that will be your image of the day. The image that you will bring with you for the rest of the day. It will remain in your eyes and eventually on your phone and you can go back to that if you need it. Take only one photo. So be sure that when you press the button, you are seeing what you are feeling. Remember, you have only one shot for this exercise. So be sure that it reflects your vision 
of that moment. Be conscious of what you're doing. Remember to hold your camera firmly and then proceed with taking the picture. The whole process usually takes me about five minutes or so, and then I am ready to sit on my meditation pillow and start to focusing on repeating my mantra with closed eyes. So, for today I think that this is it. If you want, you can send me your thoughts, your pictures, using the following email address enos.photografia at gmail.com Bye bye, see you next time.